Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's river tutorial. Uh, fresh off the back of the Grayling Classic, I thought I would share with you one of the small nymphs that did me a great turn while I was there. Uh, and it is small, uh, there's my pinky nail. So I've got the camera zoomed right in, I hope there's no problem seeing it. And without further ado, let's get into it. In the vice then is a Hanak H450 barbless hook, this is the Jig Superb and it's at size 18. This is the smallest the Jig Superbs go to and I've coupled that with a Hanak flue bead, it's 2mm and it's a slotted tungsten bead and as you can see it's a powder pink. So the thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas GSP. It's at 30 denier, and as you can see, it's a white thread. First thing I'm going to do with this is add a small touch of super glue to the shank of the hook. That just gives me a good bed to get my silk down. Make sure you've got that bead locked into place, and then come back a few turns before coming with your snips and removing your waste. Now I'm going to add my wire rib next and what I'm using is some Trout Lines purple wire ribbing. Uh, I've already got a little section pulled off and I'm going to catch that in and what I always like to do is insert it into the bead he says as he pulls it out and bends it. into the eye and catch it in. I just think it adds another little tiny bit of weight, although that's negligible at this point. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is bring my thread all the way up to create the tiniest of tapers. In a size 18 hook, will it make any difference? More than likely not, but I like to do it anyway. Now, while I'm filming this, I've had to move my vice slightly more towards the camera and I'm finding it quite difficult to tie, to be honest. So, bear with me. What I've got is I've put this into a bobbin holder. And what is this, you ask? Well, it's trout line tinsel. It's small and the color's metallic pink. Now, what I want to do is put down an underbody on this fly. So I'm going to catch that in and it's very delicate stuff. So just be careful and it will want to spin up on you. So just every now and again you've got to unspin it and bring it all the way back. Don't worry if you miss any bits on the way down. And you can see again, I'm just taking care to undo the bobbin, uh, the bobbin, sorry. And then I'm gonna just get good coverage on that. And I want to just make sure I've got the whole shebang tied in. Now, next, to secure that in place, what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of resin and just catch it in at the top there and then cure it off. Like so. And then, again, I can come in with my snips now in the knowledge that the resin will hold that into place until I can bring my thread up. Now it is delicate, so you've got to just take your time with it. I'm going to remove the waste of the pink at the bottom here. And there we go. So I've got that nice pink underbody and uh, the powder pink head. You can see the theme here. Um, Graylin love pink and I think that's why this works so well. But sometimes, uh, certainly to my mind, too pink 
and they, they'd shy away from it after a certain number of fish have been caught. It's like a collective intelligence. Uh, I'll just not snip that up and up, so I'll just come in where I can see it. It's better. Yeah, they've got a collective intelligence and uh, I think once you've caught a couple of fish, other fish, they no, they no longer look at the fly as it goes past. So I like to make it a little bit more subdued. So what I'm going to do is add a little dubbed body. And uh, I'm using natural boosted possum. This is from Trout Stalkers. I think it's readily available now from uh, Andrew Ellis. And I've already taken a little bit out of the packet. Now I don't want to use a lot of this. And the reason I'm using possum rather than the other stuff is it's very fine and uh, works well with this fly, or it certainly worked well for me. So sometimes you've just got to get tiny, or the grayling don't want to know. And uh, the f the size of the fly doesn't relate to the size of the grayling. Funnily enough, I've had some some big fish on some very small flies over the years. So I've dubbed that on. As you can see, it's very fine. I'm very close with the camera, so it might look a little thick to you, but it is really fine. So I'm going to come over, and I'm going to do open turns with that. Up the bug. And then when I get up to the head, I'm going to strip back all that excess that I don't need. And stick it back in the packet. Yeah. Then, so the opposite, I, I wound my thread clockwise, I'm going to bring my rib counterclockwise. You don't need to be fussy with this. It's just to hold everything into place. I know it looks um, not much. Not a good mouthful, as some would say, but I can guarantee you, if you take the time to tie these up, you won't be disappointed if you're a grilling angler. Okay, to finish off then, I'm going to add a little bit of UV resin to my thread. Grab my whip finish tool. Make a mess of it as usual. And finish your fly off. Now it might seem a lot of effort for such a small, innocuous looking fly, but I can only tell you it works for me. Very quick one this week really. Uh, when I'm in full flow, I can rattle these out, no bother. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate your support. Just click the subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time.